Have you ever dreamed of flying above the clouds at Mach 1 or even Mach 2? Well, this is the reality for some ultra-wealthy individuals who want to play in their own private version of Top Gun. While it's not unusual for the ultra-wealthy to own private jets, only a subset own fighter jets. We're gonna fill you in on how you can purchase and fly your very own fighter jet. Before we dive in, make sure you don't miss our next video and subscribe with the button down below. Where to purchase a fighter jet Unlike sports cars, it's not as easy as walking into a dealership and flying a fighter jet off the lot. In fact, fighter jets are even more regulated than regular private jets. Since fighter jets were initially built for the military, they frequently have weapons and other deadly features that might be quite dangerous in a civilian's hands. Just imagine how scary it would be if any old billionaire could fly around in a new fully loaded fighter jet built for warfare. This is why there are strict regulations on the type of planes available for purchase. While specific requirements vary by country, all decommissioned fighter jets available to civilians have gone through a demilitarization process. Demilitarization removes all the parts included in the fighter plane that has its utility and warfare to ensure national safety and security. The US has one of the strictest demilitarization processes, which basically renders most planes unfit for flight. Therefore, if you want to purchase a fighter jet that has more practicality than just sitting on display, you'll most likely need to import it from another country with more lenient demilitarization policies, like the UK. It's not uncommon for countries to sell their retired military craft to other countries for extra cash flow and relationship building. Due to this, it is usually possible to purchase a functional aircraft even if your country's demilitarization policies are more strict. For example, nearly all privately owned fighter jets in the US were imported from other countries. Qualifications to fly a fighter jet Unlike regular civilian aircraft, the requirements to purchase a fighter jet are much more strenuous and require something money can't buy. Time For most demilitarized planes, you'll need 1,000 hours of flight time, with half of those in the same aircraft class that you intend to fly. For perspective, this would be an hour of flight time every day for nearly three years. However, you can bypass these requirements if you're already a military pilot or veteran with similar aircraft qualifications. Even if you're able to spend the time to get your pilot's license, fighter jets are notoriously difficult to fly. These aircraft are usually very sensitive and the slightest error can become fatal. While newer jets do exist, most demilitarized jets are rather old and have rudimentary navigation equipment. This makes it easy to go off course or mistake up for down. Additionally, in order to make maneuvers similar to Tom Cruise and Top Gun or the US Blue Angels, you'll need to practice making emergency maneuvers and withstanding G-force, which can quickly make you pass out without proper training. Cost of owning a fighter jet There's a reason that fighter jet ownership is reserved for the military and the ultra-wealthy. While you might be able to purchase a fighter jet for less than the price of a supercar, they are extremely expensive to maintain and fly. The purchase price for a demilitarized jet ranges from $50,000 to the multi-millions. Most fighter planes owned by civilians cost a few hundred thousand dollars. However, you'll definitely have many more costs before you can even sit in the plane, let alone fly. Since most planes are imported, you'll likely pay for shipping. Sorry, these are not available on Amazon Prime. And it's not as simple as flying the plane to its destination. The aircraft will most likely need to be disassembled for shipping and then reassembled upon arrival. Add on some additional import taxes and fees and you're looking at at least a few hundred grand. Once it's arrived and reassembled, it still won't be ready to fly. At a minimum, you'll likely need to have a professional install avionics and navigation equipment since these are usually removed as part of the demilitarization process. Many planes require additional upgrades to make them safe and meet certification requirements. Depending on the plane, the upgrades could cost a few hundred thousand into the multi-millions. 
But wait, there's more! You'll need to get the plane inspected and registered with the FAA under the experimental category, which requires another million dollars, give or take. Next, you'll need insurance should any oopsies occur, which will run you another million dollars. If you're not ex-military, your training will cost you half a million dollars and at least three years of diligent training. And we're still not even close to done. Depending on the plane, you'll need to rent a space in a hangar with a runway long enough for your specific aircraft. At a minimum, you'll pay $1,000 a month, but it could cost millions. You'll also need to hire a specialized mechanic to maintain your aircraft. Fighter jets are not Toyotas. They require constant and expensive upkeep just to fly for a few hours a year. When you're finally able to get up in the sky, you'll be spending tens of thousands of dollars an hour in fuel costs and wear and tear on the plane. After all of that, you'll finally be able to fly your plane, for about an hour at a time. Additionally, your plane will be rated for a certain number of flight hours before it needs a major rebuild, and most fighter jets have already clocked 75% of their lifetime flight hours. Flying Fighter Jets Obviously, owning a fighter jet is a big deal. It's an even bigger deal to actually fly it. Even if you have the capital, time, and inclination to purchase a fighter jet and get your license, most restrictions by local aviation authorities are too strict to even consider this enormous expense. Most states in the US and many European countries allow flights but have varying requirements and restrictions. You most likely won't be able to do tricks like you see on TV without landing in jail. Some fighter jets are classified as experimental demonstration planes, which means you can only fly them when practicing for a show, flying in a show, or flying to and from a show. Michael Dorn, best known for playing Worf in Star Trek, found this out the hard way after he purchased an F-86 Sabre. High-End Fighter Jets for Sale Just like sports cars, there are a few price ranges for fighter jets. And of course, the ultra-wealthy want the best of the best. The 1959 McDonnell Douglas F-4 H-1F is the only flyable plane in its class outside the military. It was originally built for the Navy and was one of the first multi-service combat jets. You can find these planes available from brokers for around $3.5 million. If you'd like to experience supersonic speeds, you can purchase a MiG-29 for $4.5 million. The MiG-29 was the main tactical fighter used by the Soviet Union at the end of the Cold War. While it may sound old, it's by no means outdated. In fact, the MiG-29 is still manufactured today as an updated model. Another Russian build, the Sukhoi Su-30, descends from a line of fighter planes originally designed in the Soviet era. Since then, the planes have been redesigned and modernized and are still in commission today. These planes can fly at a speed of 1,350 kilometers per hour and boast a climbing rate of 230 meters per second. At a purchase price of $40 million with a $50,000 per hour fuel cost, these fighters are reserved for the wealthiest individuals. How to rent a jet if owning a fighter jet sounds like way too much work to you, but you still want to feel those G-forces, it's much more economical to book a flight with an experienced pilot. In the US, you can ride along in an L-39 in Florida or California, if you'd like to journey to the edge of space or brave the only civilian supersonic jet experience, you can commandeer a MiG-29 in Russia. A company in Canada also offers 30 to 45 minute rides in a T-33 T-Bird fighter jet where you can explore Waterloo near the city of Toronto. However, just because it's cheaper to rent rather than buy a fighter jet, it's still not inexpensive. Flights range from a few thousand dollars to tens of thousands. If you had the funds, which fighter jet would you own and where would you take it? Tell us in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and check out our next video. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.